Brianna has been teasing her skincare line on social media for the past week or so, and today she officially dropped Fenty Skin. But what are the products actually like? For instance, what do the ingredients tell us? Are they worth it or any good? And what can we actually expect from this line? She dropped a cleanser, a toner, and the most important part of a skincare routine, a sunscreen. But let's talk about some of my thoughts on these. I'm actually under NDA with Fenty Skin. NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. It's a legally binding contract that basically says, you can't talk about this until we tell you to. And unfortunately, in order to get the products in hand, that's what I had to do. But thankfully, I'm allowed to speak about it today. What's interesting is that that contract is with Kendo, the company who's actually the owner and creator of this line with Rihanna. You see, she didn't actually formulate these products. She tried them, she tested them, and she approved them, but she's not a cosmetic chemist. So let's talk about what that all means. Let's talk about this line, what's actually in these products, and again, what you can expect. This line is created by Kendo. They're a big company, and they actually have created some other lines as well. We're talking about Bite Beauty, KVD Beauty, as well as Ula Henriksen. Now what's interesting is that out of all of these parent companies, they're probably one of the least problematic. You see, most of the skincare lines that you buy, whether it's Fenty Skin or something else at the drugstore, is actually actually owned by one of these parent companies. Like a parent can have kids, a lot of these parent companies own a lot of smaller brands. Fenty Skin happens to be the latest one from Kendo, who yes, also owns and created Fenty Beauty. Now, what's surprisingly great about having Kendo as a parent company is that they actually have formulators, cosmetic chemists, and scientists looking at and formulating these. And most of their lines, including this one, are vegan and cruelty-free. Now, when they launched Fenty Skin, they did something amazing, which was actually create inclusivity, meaning dropping 40 plus shades of foundation color. I'm hoping that we're going to see something similar here, but as of right now, I've only got three products. And again, when I first got these, based off of the inclusivity, based off of the marketing that I saw online, I was super excited. But as I actually have them in my hand, I'm slightly underwhelmed. And let's talk about the ingredients and why. As mentioned, I've tried three products and let's start with the cleanser. This is the Fenty Skin Total Cleanser and it's formulated to remove it all. We're probably talking about makeup, oil, dirt, etc. However, always turn and learn those ingredients. We start out with water, which is pretty basic. We have sodium cocal glyconate, as well as some other surfactants in here. And we have to go a little ways down the list before we actually get to glycerin, which is that humectant or hydrating ingredient. This is a very creamy cleanser that does foam in your hands. Again, they did a really good job with the component or the packaging. This is super revolutionary, and I haven't seen a lot like this before. But when it comes to the actual formula, I think it's good. But again, I don't see it as being revolutionary. When we do look further down the list, we see Camilla Sensus leaf extract. This is green tea. We also see some fig extract and some ginkgo. These could be antioxidants or anti-inflammatory, but again, there's not a lot in here. Um, and when we actually look at most of this formula, it's basically coconut derived or coconut based. And then there are some fillers in there, which we do expect to see. Again, coming from a parent company that also owns Ula Henriksen, I was expecting to see some similar things. And I do. Again, it is a good line, but I am slightly underwhelmed because I don't see anything super revolutionary in here. It also does have fragrance slash perfume. This could be a penetration enhancer, allowing some of these ingredients to go in deeper, but seeing as how strong it smells, I think that this is just overall for the scent of it. Um, I don't particularly love that. I'm fine with fragrance-free products, but I know some people hate them, and other people don't want their faces smelling like ass and will not use a product without that fragrance. So please keep that in mind. Now they also have phenoxyethanol in here. Phenoxyethanol is an ingredient that we've done a deep dive on, and if you haven't seen this, you need to. But essentially, companies have been putting this in as a preservative because they're not using parabens. We've looked at some of the science of parabens, and I think that there is a lot of fear mongering around them. But what that really tells me about this product is that they are listening to their audience, they are listening to what consumers want. And even if science says that things like parabens or sulfates are safe, this line is choosing not to include it, probably because there's a public or a consumer opinion about those ingredients and not wanting to use them. Again, it does come out very creamy. It lathers onto the skin nicely. It does remove makeup and dirt pretty well. I would not personally recommend this if you do have acne prone skin. I would say that this is made for more of a combination skin type. And the biggest thing that I notice about this is the fragrance. I feel like even for a cleanser, the fragrance in here is really, really strong. And again, because it's on your skin for 60 seconds to three minutes, I don't think that's the biggest deal. But if it's something that bothers you, keep that in mind. The next product is this toner. And this is actually a really cool formula. It's kind of a blend between a toner 
and an essence. It's called the Fat Water, the Pore Refining Toner Serum. Again, it comes out of this little top belly button dispenser type thing, which I do think is pretty cool. And you can squirt this directly onto your hand and place onto your skin, or you can put it onto a cotton pad or a bamboo reusable pad and swipe it on. The formula itself is pretty fun. It's like a liquidy jelly. But again, when I actually look at the ingredients, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. The first ingredient in here is water, and then we actually have witch hazel. I know a lot of people hate witch hazel. There's a lot of fear around it, talking about how it can destroy your skin. Witch hazel is potent, and it can be damaging if used incorrectly. But I actually don't hate witch hazel. But again, it depends on where the witch hazel is derived from, what else it is suspended in. So it really does depend, but I don't think witch hazel is the absolute worst. However, there's more than that in here, and so we have to keep looking down that list. We also have butylene glycol, which is what's giving it this jelly-like texture, and then we get to our first active, which is niacinamide. Niacinamide is a form of vitamin B3, and it is really great for redness, specifically if you have rosacea, if you get red after a pimple, um, if you do have oily skin, this niacinamide can help balance it out. The only thing is that the claim on this toner is that it is pore refining, and that's what got me thinking, okay, is the niacinamide in here what's pore refining? Like, describe that a little bit more. Because again, niacinamide can help with color, and it can help with oil production, which could maybe deal with the size or the appearance of pores, but there's nothing in here that I really see as pore refining per se. When we look further, we actually see that radish root ferment filtrate. This sounds like a radish root, sounds like a plant. Well, this is actually another stabilizer or preservative. Again, this is one of those ingredients that have double meaning. And seeing as this line was really listening to customers and saying, nope, people don't want parabens, so we're not going to put them in, this is a common paraben alternative. So again, this kind of points to the fact that they're listening to consumer fear and they are responding to it. Looking a little bit further down, we do have cactus. They also again, put that fig and that ginkgo in here. Um, so those plants could have a little bit of antioxidant power to them, which might help with pores. But I do like the glycerin that we see a little bit later on. That glycerin is a humectant, meaning it actually draws moisture or water into the skin and into the face and locks it in, which is great. Again, when using this, I don't see it as super pore refining. I do see it as getting rid of any makeup left over that the cleanser didn't get. I do see it as a little bit of oil control. And then with the niacinamide and the glycerin, I could see this as a little bit of redness reduction and then maybe adding a little bit of surface hydration to the skin which I suppose could plump up those outer layers of the skin and call it pore refining but I think that pore refining is a stretch and again this kind of reminds me of Glossier this looks like something Glossier would create it is a fun toner that if you are not sensitive to fragrance and if you need a little bit of balancing and a little bit of moisture it's a good step before applying your serums and your moisturizers but if you have acne prone skin is this going to clear it no if you have dark spots or hyperpigmentation no. Even if you have redness like rosacea or erythema, is this going to help? Probably not much. Again, this is not a treatment line. This is a celebrity skincare line, so we can expect fun. We can expect interesting textures and really bomb diggity packaging, but I'm not actually seeing any clinical control or any problem solving being done here. Then, this is what I'm probably most excited about. This is the sunscreen, and check this out. It's a really cool component container that you kind of lock in and Put on. This is actually listed as the Hydrovisor, so even though it's a sunscreen, it's a hybrid sunscreen and moisturizer. Specifically, an invisible moisturizer broad spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen. When you pump this out, it does kind of come out as a shimmery cream. It's very, very smooth on the skin and there is no white cast. And again, coming from Rihanna, who experiences the issue of sunscreens and foundations not being inclusive firsthand, and coming from, you know, Rihanna and Kendo, who created 50 Shades of Foundation, I I am so happy that they did create a sunscreen that indeed cater to people who have darker skin and darker skin colors. Again, the component is my favorite. It pops up and down like this. I do think that the formula is pretty cool. When we turn and learn those ingredients, we find out that this is a chemical or organic sunscreen. Organic coming from chemistry, meaning that it's based on carbon and hydrogen. And there has been some controversy about organic or chemical sunscreens being absorbed into the bloodstream. We've talked about that in detail and whether or not it's safe for you. What I do like is that by definition, this appears to be reef safe, meaning it doesn't have oxybenzone or octanoxate, which are two ingredients that 
that have been shown to kill coral reefs. However, this does have those other chemical slash organic UV filters that I'm not the biggest fan of. These include avobenzone, homosalate, and octisalate. And again, I would have preferred this to be a mineral formula, but unfortunately, mineral formulas usually contain both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which do create a lot of flashback on the skin. And again, when formulating for people who have darker skin tones and darker skin colors, that flashback leaves you gray, it leaves you ashy, and that's just not okay. I do love that this is inclusive, but I do wish that they would do some digging, do some chemistry and some cosmetic science, and find a way to create a mineral formula that does not flashback, that works for people with the darkest, most melanin-infused skin types. But unfortunately, we're not there yet, but we do have this, you know, super futuristic Fenty Skin purple packaging. When we look at the other ingredients in here, this kind of explains why the texture kind of reminds me of like a strawberry whip. The first ingredient is water, then we have glycerin, meaning this will sit and soak into the skin nicely and actually provide a little bit of that humectant hydration, which is great. And then what's interesting is that this actually has safflower oil in it, which is probably why it melts onto the skin in such a buttery way. Just the way oil really melts onto the skin and it doesn't stay solid at room temperature, this sunscreen doesn't either. Once it touches the heat of your hands or the heat of your face, it starts to melt down and really give you a nice glow. What's also nice about this sunscreen is that it does have niacinamide, again, that vitamin B3. That is great because it can help with redness. And again, sunscreen, kind of think of it as sun protection inside of a moisturizer or inside of a face filter or primer because that's technically what sunscreen is. It's an active ingredient that fights against the sun put inside of a formula that really sits like a moisturizer on top of your face. So the fact that this actually has some skincare ingredients in it, I am happy about. In addition, we also have hyaluronic acid, which again, hello moisture. And there's actually cornstarch in here, which is very, very interesting. Cornstarch is often used in makeup actually to mattify the skin and to take away some shine. And I believe that because the third ingredient here is oil, they're actually using this cornstarch to buffer out some of the greasiness that traditional sunscreens create. So again, what I like about this sunscreen is that it is non-greasy. It feels like a nice, lightweight, glowy moisturizer that you put onto the skin. The plants in here include watermelon. We do have a Christmas palm extract, which I found to be very interesting. And then we have aloe barbatus leaf juice, AKA aloe vera. And these are plant extracts that I actually like. Again, they could be giving as a hydration or an antioxidant boost. However, I don't think that they are contributing to either the fragrance or the color because at the bottom we do see red number 33, which is probably what's giving us that strawberry look. And we also see different fragrance ingredients, including fragrance slash perfume, as well as hexylcinnamol and limonene. And again, these fragrance ingredients are not horrible. Not everyone will be reactive to them. Most studies point to less than 5% of the population being affected. However, if you have super sensitive skin, this is probably something you're going to want to avoid. And if you're allergic to other fragrances, or if you do have a ton of allergies, you don't want your body to become sensitized to these over time. We've actually done a full video on fragrance right here. So before fearing fragrance or before flocking to it, please watch and understand this first. So is Fenty Skin worth it? And what can we expect further down from the line? Because again, these three products are just what's to start. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more next. Personally, I find the cleanser to be basic. I wouldn't spend my money on this, especially especially because I do have acne prone skin. If you have combo skin and you really like your cleanser to smell good, you really wanna enjoy your skincare, then go for it. Especially if you're a fan of Ula Henriksen, I think that you will love this. However, if you are looking at a treatment approach or if you do wear really heavy makeup or heavy sunscreen, I don't think this is going to cut it. As far as the toner goes, this is a really fun product. And again, if you wanna have fun with your skincare, if a toner is an option but not a necessity in your routine, go for it. Again, it reminds me a lot of Glossier, which I do appreciate. However, it is not my favorite thing ever. I think that this is much more worth it than the cleanser is, especially because it has ingredients that I would be okay with leaving on my skin. And this honestly looks like a really fun product to like, you know, take out of your bag if you're in the women's locker room or if you are someone who uses your skincare in front of other people, which because of COVID and because of the world pandemic, we're probably not in proximity to other people. But just the way a girl would take out her MAC or her Chanel compact and reapply her makeup, that's kind kind of how I see, you know, using one of these two products. You are paying for Rihanna and her name and her influence, and that does show up inside of the brand.
The sunscreen is definitely my favorite. I absolutely love the component. I love that they created a sunscreen because it is the most important part of a skincare routine. The thing is that I do find this bottle to be a little bit small. I wish that they would make a larger size. And I am so happy that this does not flash back. It literally feels like a melty strawberry moisturizer. And it works for people who have the darkest skin tones and darkest skin colors. I personally don't like chemical sunscreen, so I do wish that this came in a mineral form. And I do wish that they would make one that is fragrance free or that they would have options that are scented by plant extracts, such as the watermelon that's literally in here, instead of adding fragrance and adding that red number 50. But I also understand that this is a celebrity line and not necessarily a treatment line, which as a medical esthetician is normally what I look for in my skincare. That also brings us into what's next for the line. I am suspecting and deeply hoping that they will launch a mineral sunscreen that comes in different tints. We've seen mineral sunscreen with tints before, but normally the tints are like a sand color or a beige color and they really don't serve people who have the darkest of skin. I would love to see a mineral sunscreen or mineral moisturizer sunscreen from Rihanna that has a tint that is for the darkest skin shades. That I think is a blue ocean marketing opportunity. I also think that we're going to see some very interesting things coming out from this line, again with really cool futuristic packaging as well as formulas. And the reason I say this is because we have to look at Rihanna's current skincare. The Insider and some other news media have reported on her skincare and it seems like she uses a lot of more basic products. Her routine is not overwhelming. You don't need 19 steps of K-beauty to have smooth glass-like skin. And seeing as Rihanna uses skincare in that way, I'm really hoping and guessing that that philosophy is going to show up in the future of this line. The makeup artist who helps Rihanna with her skincare routine has specifically said that she uses a combination of cleansers, hydrating masks, and exfoliating scrubs before music videos. Scrubs kind of concerns me because of the fact that depending on what's in these scrubs, they could damage skin. I mean, we don't need another St. Ives and we definitely don't need another Kylie skin that looks like, you know, a sausage shit of walnut shells. However, it would be interesting to see Rihanna come out with an exfoliator. Again, something that does cater and keep in mind dark skin. I'm personally thinking of salicylic or lactic acid as ingredients. Um, and if she did want to do a scrub, even something like rice or jojoba, which are very, very gentle to the skin and are safe for the fish and the environment and the ecosystems that we share this planet with. Unfortunately, when we look at Rihanna's skincare routine, it seems like she wastes a lot of money on bullshit products. We're specifically talking about creme de la mer, which is like $400 of marketing bullshit and literally playing music to seaweed before they put it in a tub. Um, I'm sorry, but my skincare doesn't need a symphony for it to be effective on my face. I'm just... I have opinions on that. The other thing is that Rihanna has never really struggled with skin issues. I know for a short period of time she did have some surface acne, but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think she's ever struggled with major pigmentation disorders or scars or like nodular cystic acne. So I don't think we're going to see any of those corrective treatments from her, but I do hope that we will see a couple more actives in the future. And something I'd love for Rihanna to come out with is something along the lines of like a tattoo balm or a tattoo cream. She has so many beautiful tattoos and especially especially as tattoos are healing, a lot of people use bombs or creams to make sure that they don't scab over and they don't get scarred or destroyed. Seeing as she wears her tattoos proudly and enjoys getting them as pieces of art, I would love to see a tattoo bomb from this line that could also be doubled up as a moisturizer or like a healing bomb. I think that would be so cool and very on brand. As far as what's next, I do think that an exfoliator or a face mask might be in the pipeline because again, that's what Rihanna personally uses um, outside of the sun sunscreen, maybe there will be a night moisturizer. So a formula like this, but without the SPF, I think that that is a next logical step. But I hope that we do not see makeup wipes. And again, Kendo is a parent company that I think really listens. They do a lot of social media listening. So hopefully they will not be doing makeup wipes because they know the horrors of them. But on the flip side, makeup wipes are very profitable. You can rip a lot of people off using them and you can actually destroy someone's skin so that they need to go buy more actives to fix it and keep a consumer in the consumer cycle, which, you know, might be good for their wallets, but it's not good for our long-term skin health. So I really hope that they will not do that. Because they listen, I don't think they will. But again, it is not out of the picture. Overall, is it worth it? It's vegan, it's cruelty-free, and if you want to support a celebrity line that is relatively unproblematic, yes, absolutely. But remember that this is a celebrity skincare line and not necessarily a treatment skincare plan. Out of all of the celebrity lines out there, I would say this is like an 8 out 
out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 because most celebrity skincare is horrible. This is halfway decent. However, if we're not looking at just celebrity skincare and we're looking at skincare as a whole, I would maybe give this a 5, maybe a 6 out of 10. And again, that 5 slash 6 is coming from the fact that we do have innovative packaging, we do have innovative textures, and finally, we're serving up something inclusive for people. But other than those few key points, there's nothing in here that seems really revolutionary. I don't think that there's anything in here that's going to transform your skin, but thankfully, other than potentially fragrance, there's not much in here that's going to absolutely destroy your skin either. If that like button is gray, go ahead and spray a little sunscreen on it, and if that subscribe button is red, go ahead and throw some fat water on it. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.